My name is Niall Muldoon. I'm the Ombudsman for Children. And for any of you who doesn't know, don't know what that is, the Ombudsman is a, it's a strange word. It's originally a Scandinavian word, came from Norway. Ombuds means defender of rights, and man in this case means of all mankind. So my job is to be the defender of rights for all children here in Ireland. And when I talk about children, I talk about everybody from zero to 18 years of age. So that includes you guys. Michael D. Higgins appointed me two and a half years ago. I have six years to push the rights of children to make sure that children's rights are being upheld throughout the whole of the country for every child in, in Ireland. That's 1.3 million children. And to do that, part of what we do is we ensure that every child and young people, as many children and young people as we can, know about their rights. And that's what we're doing here tonight. The UN, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, they created the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which outlines over 40 rights that belong to you just by virtue of being born. Every single child has these rights. Every single country in the world has signed these, this convention except one. America's the only country that hasn't signed it. There's three main rights that we talk about all the time out of the 40. One is that you have the right to be heard. You have the right for your voice to be heard. One is that you have the right for your best interest to be taken on board when anybody's making a decision about you. And the third is that there's no discrimination. So you cannot be discriminated against just because you're a child. You cannot be discriminated against in your age, your sex, your uh, sexuality, your gender, any of those issues, age, and race, nationality, or even citizenship. So even if you're not a citizen of Ireland, you still have those rights. And one of the great quotes from me, from Harry Potter, is from Professor Dumbledore. He says that a child's voice, however honest and true, is meaningless to those who have forgotten how to listen. And I'm afraid there's a lot of adults who have forgotten how to listen at this stage, unfortunately. Adults in government, adults in departments, adults in charge of education, adults in charge of hospitals, in charge of housing. A lot of adults have forgotten that they're working for you as the children. And that's part of my job, is to reawaken their, their listening, to make sure they listen. So when I go in and I have a meeting with a minister or with, a, with somebody in the government or somebody in charge of the Department of Housing, I remind them that children have to be heard, children have to be listened to, and you have the right to be considered when they make decisions. Malala Yousafa. This is a young girl from Pakistan in the wildest, most remote area of Pakistan, living in the mountains in a very small village. At 11 years of age, she was going to school, and they were, they were run by a group, the area was run by a group called the Taliban, who were rebels, who didn't want anybody going to education, and particularly not girls. She stood up to them and said, every girl and every child needs the right to be educated. She knew that at 11 years of age. And they were so scared of her and her voice, and how she raised her voice, they were so scared of her that at the age of 12, they got onto her school bus and shot her in the head, tried to assassinate her. She was lucky, a group of charities took her to Birmingham in England, did a fantastic operation, came through the operation, one year to the day after the operation, she spoke at the UN Nations building in New York to every government in the world about the right for children to have education. That's how you raise your voice, that's how her voice came forward. She was so powerful in that one voice that she was able to speak to all the nations. So the Taliban, thinking they were shutting down one voice, actually exploded her message around the world. She's now a UN ambassador for peace, and she also, I think I saw a photograph today or recently, she has just started first year, in degree, first year degree course in Oxford University. You guys can be like that. One voice can make a huge difference. It's up to you to recognize what your opinions are and what you want to say. And sometimes you might have to speak for other people. There might be four or five of you have an issue in a class, maybe only one of you are able to talk. Do that for each other and for other people. Because as she says, she doesn't raise up her voice so that she can shout. She raises up her voice so that the people who aren't able to speak can be heard. You have a voice, you can use it for yourself, but you can also use it for the good of others. Don't be afraid of it. It's very, very powerful. Homelessness is such a huge issue. 3,000 children living in hotel rooms, living in emergency accommodation. It's just a disgrace nowadays, and hopefully we can get to the bottom of that and, and turn it around. Mental health is a huge issue for your young people. You're concerned about things that, like long waiting lists, things like the fact that there's no 24 hours, seven day a week service for children and young people in that situation, and things like the consent legislation, so that at 16 you can consent to a lot of medical operations, but you can't consent to your own mental health treatment. And the new one that's coming on recently is this idea that you, as a young people, might start to vote at 16 years of age. That's a place where you can really get your voice. You can really speak up. Because you, whether you're 18 now, and it doesn't, you could turn around and say, it doesn't matter to me. 
but it does matter maybe to your younger brother or sister, to your cousin, to your neighbors. This is a change. Which way, to, regardless of which way you think it should go, it's something you need to engage with because you have an opportunity. If, if we change the age to 16, society could be a whole lot different. You could be a lot more different decisions because you children that age and young people that age will have a voice. So think about it. Consider there will be a referendum next year. You have an opportunity to raise your voice en masse in relation to that in whatever side you want to go on. But think about it and engage with it because that's where your voice matters. And I want you to, to think about how you can raise your voice. And the most important thing I want you to do is remember, you have the right to be heard. It's crucial that you understand that and you have the right to be heard. It's not easy. You have to speak up. It's difficult. You've got to be confident. Get help. You can help each other to raise your voice. But what I want you to do as you leave here today, I want you to speak up now. You have the right to be heard. You have the right to be heard. Okay, remember it, and thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.